Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, more dismal Disney news. Yeah, uh, again, we don't make the news, we just report the news. It's 4D, it's a daily dose of dismal Disney. Now this one is interesting, and I gotta give a hat tip to CCG, who sent it over earlier today, but ESPN is going to be laying off hundreds of employees. Well, yeah, I guess they already did as of today. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, is it seems like they're doing so uh, to free up money for new video ventures. Uh-huh. Oh, is that what they're saying? Okay. Yeah, so on top of the 28,000 people they laid off in the theme parks, and they're talking about restructuring their business to focus, you know, almost exclusively on, on video and streaming, now they're laying people off at ESPN, Right, too. which doesn't make sense. Um, yes, yeah, so they laid out 300 employees that actually have positions, and they didn't fill 200 other positions they had openings for. Yeah. So they said it's about 500 people is about 10% of their staff at the yeah. division, which is you know quite a bit. Um, so they sent out a memo from the ESPN president, and he's like, "Dear colleagues, as you know, we value transparency, uh -huh. <laughs> and our yeah. yeah, I know, right? And our internal dialogue, and that means in both good and challenging times. After much consideration, I have some difficult organizational decisions to share. We will be reducing our workforce, impacting approximately 300 value team members, value team members, in addition to 200 open positions." So they're basically saying because of the pandemic, they have to strategize how they're going to move forward and blah, 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 blah. Go ahead. Yeah, they said that they've reached, this is how they, they spun it on uh, some of the other news outlets too. They, they reached an inflection point. The speed at which change is occurring requires great urgency. And we must now deliver on serving sports fans in a myriad of new ways. Placing resources in support of our direct-to-consumer business strategy, mm -hmm. digital, and of course, continued innovative television experiences is more critical than ever. So that is more important than your job, just so well, you know. Well, I said that. However, building a successful future is, in a changing world means facing hard choices, making informed decisions about how and where we need to go, and as always, in the most efficient way possible, right before the investor call, it is by far the most challenging job of any leadership team. And while it must be done looking through the business lens. Oh, they're going to put their business hat on. Yep. It must also be done with great respect and genuine concern for people. Oh, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Disney always has genuine concern for people. Mm -hmm. People with money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because of the wealth of their, of their right. investor, investor, uh, share, shareholder wealth. Shareholder wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're parting ways with some exceptional team members, some of whom have been here for a long time. Don't let the door hit you the butt out, even though you've been here a long time. Yeah, all of whom have made an important contribution to ESPN. Well, you know, maybe you would have had more money if ESPN didn't go all political. That was a big complaint that people had. It was. Were dropping. Well, interestingly enough, while they're making these cuts for their changing direction, they are also trying to renegotiate their deal for the NFL Monday Night Football at $2 billion. They're also trying to get Sunday Night Football away from NBC, and they they're hoping eventually to get the Super Bowl. That is what they're saying pretty much in Variety too. That they're cutting people so they can free up money to, to chase after more mm -hmm. uh, more important things than people's jobs. You know? Well, I remember when this whole thing started and ESPN didn't have any sports to cover. So they were running like Disney sports movies. Yeah. And they had all these celebrity, you know commentators and things on their channel. They were asking those people to please take a pay cut so that they can keep their staff on. Um, well, executives took a pay cut too because all Disney executives had to do that. Mm. So they were asking celebrities to please take a, a pay cut. Um, some did, some didn't. So that people could stay on. And now they're changing direction. They're just cutting a bunch of people. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it sounds like they're... Uh, I don't know. I don't even think... I, I'm going to be honest. I think this is all a smokescreen screen. All the way around to Disney. I think this is basically, they're trying to make it look like they have a plan to investors. Because all this is happening right before the earnings call. And they're gonna, they, they they gussy it up. Mm -hmm. They gussy it up with corporate language. Yep. Be like, oh, yes, we have a plan. We're going to refocus our Oh, yes, the plan. I'm refocusing the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I promise. I won't, I won't uh, lie anymore, Mom. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's... As the nose grows, uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on here. This is this is uh, you know partially true, but I think it's also to give the appearance of having a plan when that investors call happens yeah, I, next that's week. That's exactly what I think it is. They can say, "Look, okay, we know it's bad, but look at all we've done. We fired a bunch of people, and then we fired some more people, and after that, 
We fired some people at ESPN too. We have a plan, well, guys. I'm waiting, and I hope they don't plan. do this. But they have been pushing off uh, dividends uh, for a while now. And if they turn around after this and be like, "Oh, it's looking so much better. Here's some dividends," I'm gonna be like, "Oh, hell to the no." Yeah. And I'm an investor, and I'll be like, "Oh, hell to the no." Well, Variety, the first comment here, people were like, "Well, how's the uh, how's the uh, politics working out for yeah, you?" Yeah, people were really upset when they did that because it's a, it's sports. It shouldn't have been political in the first place. Yeah, so then, of course, the comments become political, too, but, you know, there we go. All six of them. All six of the comments. It's, look, guys, we, we said before that, uh, you know, Disney is pinched harder than uh, they're letting on. And they're just trying to give the appearance at this point. I think that they have a plan. But the reality is, is the Titanic is sinking. The ship's on fire. The people are jumping overboard. And the media is basically just playing the violin on the deck. Pretty much. Pretending it's okay. And a lot of these things they want to do, you can't just flip a switch and do overnight. They take years. Yeah. They, they took other places years. And yeah, you can leverage your brand somewhat to, uh, to quit, make that a little speedier. But not to the extent that, that they're claiming they're going to do. And, and and if you look behind the scenes, there's a lot of backdoor deals going on, mm -hmm. a lot of things that they normally wouldn't do with sponsorships and things coming on board that you're not hearing about or seeing. And they're throwing a lot of people ob overboard. And I ex fully expect more. We yeah. said we expect more people to be thrown overboard when we heard they were changing direction. Yes. And we knew they would go to the places like, well, we already did the parks. So now they're going to head out to these other companies. Throw more people overboard there, and that's exactly what they're doing. Just like we said was going to happen. Marvel Comics, you're next. Oh, well, here's hoping. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, you're right. They went to the theme parks first because that was basically an easy decision for them. Mm -hmm. One of the parks isn't open, you know, and they can justify that. But, yeah, this they made this announcement two weeks ago. That, uh, that, you know, Disney stock was doing really well because it looked, again, this is all about looking like you have a plan when you don't have a plan. Yeah. And they, they knew that they'd get a stock bump. Like, guys, guess what? I know it looks really bad, but, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be funds. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Funds. <laughs> tomorrow we're going to have, you know, we have a plan. This was the plan all along. No, it wasn't. The plan was to grow Disney Plus in tandem with the movies and the theme parks and the travel and all the other stuff, ESPN, all the other stuff that Disney does. They did not plan to have Disney Plus have to be their life raft. No, it just happened to be there. It just happened to be there. If it wasn't there, I mean, and even then, I think it's still a drag on the company because it's, you know, five or six years away from well, being profitable. The only reason they launched it as soon as they did was because they were trying to beat a, um, Apple. Because, yeah. um, you know, uh, Iger was on the board of that at the same time that they were doing Disney Plus. And wasn't Apple, it had the Apple Plus, and Disney's like, oh, we're doing Disney Plus. And it was a conflict of interest to me that he was yeah. on the board of, of Apple, that was a competitor at the same time of the Disney. Um, but, which he pulled himself off there. But that's why the, the rush was. It was to beat HBO. It was to beat Apple. It had nothing to do with this. It just happened to work out that they had that to their advantage. I think they launched it too soon because yeah. they would have had a hell of a lot more content um, at launch had they just waited. But I guess at the end of the day, it's probably good they did because, you know, they would have completely been screwed. Well, I kind of wonder what would have happened had they not launched Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. If they waited like another year, they might not launch it at all. They might be right, like, we right. don't have the money to launch it And now, they might so. be a completely different place. So, I mean, it's probably, you know, hindsight. It's probably the good that they launched early, even though I thought they launched it too early because they did not have the content. Um, they promised they did not have enough content to make it valuable. Um, they're fixing that, but they're going really slow on it. And now let's push back because of COVID. Yeah. So, but now ESPN's going to get the knife and uh, they're, Hulu will probably get a knife. Uh, and Everybody's going to get the knife. They you get a knife. People, you get a knife. People don't understand how bad, how bad Disney's financial position is, right? They keep spinning it like, hey, guys, we got to plan things. are going to be good. It is, I'm telling you, it's worse than they're letting on. It's worse than anybody could have imagined. They did not have, and we will agree with Elizabeth Warren on this point because we've been saying it, they did not have a rainy day fund for mm -hmm. anything like this. Nope. A lot of smart companies have, you know, operating capital in the bank. They have it, you know, tucked away. Disney immediately, as soon as they knew they were going to be down for an extended period of time, uh, immediately had to borrow billions of dollars. Which is all on Iger. It's all. An I mean, Iger. it's all an Iger. He's the one who didn't save the money, overspent. You know, ran franchises into the ground. You know, made sure that there was executive, you know, buy, you know, executive pay, stock buybacks, high dividends, all that. Um, 
he is ultimately responsible for most of this. But you know, you said about spinning. All I keep thinking of, if you ever put paint on a top and then spun the top, or even a bit on a merry-go-round, the faster it goes, the faster you spin it, the more stuff flies off of it. And yeah. that's what this reminds me of. The faster they put the spin on this, the more people get thrown overboard. Yeah, and uh, look, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till after after the holidays. Uh, yeah, after the investor call. Yeah, after the investor call, because they usually do around when they know it's gonna be bad, and we've been watching them for years. When they know it's going to be bad, the end of the, the quarter, they, they start tossing people overboard. After they break the bad news to the investors, they toss more people I mean, overboard. After they BS the investor, razzle-dazzle, talk around it. Razzle-dazzle. Then, then they toss people overboard. Razzle-dazzle, everybody. Uh, yeah, and that's what's going to happen. Because then at that point, because if they started you know, laying more people off all of a sudden before the investor call, the investors are going to have a lot of questions. This way they can soften the blow and be like, oh, guys, we have a plan. We're laying these people off to focus on streaming and we expect to beat Netflix by possibly maybe next year. Which is funny because ESPN Plus is their, stream, their streaming things are bundling. So I just, you know, I don't even ask anymore. Razzle dazzle. Yeah. They, they don't even know what they're doing. Guys, the truth is Disney doesn't even know what we they're doing. We need more cuts. We need them quick. Curry trims people off of ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. Claim it's for our new business strategy that we are just making up, pulling out of our ass, you know, <laughs> Mickey's- every second. Mickey's fudgy fiscal quarter. <laughs> quarterly or, why do you think he gloves. wears gloves? That's why Mickey wears gloves because they're pulling they're pulling their financial plan out of their ass uh, <laughs> from quarter to quarter at this point. That's right. I think we're gonna wrap it up. Please do. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.